Good afternoon, Scarlet T3 Live. Welcome to today's recap. So it is Wednesday, first day of the second quarter. And when new quarters begin, we try and look a little bit towards clarity about which way can we go? Can we get some kind of new trend? How do we maneuver? Does composure change? Because we all know the first quarter, you had Europe exploding to the upside. You had Asia break out with potency. And yet our markets basically lethargic, range bound. And anytime it looked sort of good, <laughs> You had to get cautious and sell, and any time it seemed as if it was going to break down, um, we held in there. And uh, that's, I guess, the definition of range-bound trading. So you have to be a little bit more disciplined. You could lose money easily, and you, know, you have to be very specific. And uh, you take a look at the chart of the SPX to see where we are now. I remember during this time period, okay, this one, you know, the world was saying you know, we were going to break below 1990, 1994. Okay, this is your first move off of it. Touched it, big bounce, touched it, big bounce, touched it. Then this time, you know, you had that, uh, you know, move where it definitely seemed like this is it. We're going to go below it. You had the red dog reversal, and uh, that ignited a move all the way to the highs. Okay, so this major support in 1990, 1995 wound up holding. So you fast forward to where we are now, okay. A pedestal higher, not too much higher, right? This prints between 1990, this is 2040, it's like 60 handles, and now we have another three months under our belt, okay? Instead of, you know, you had this and you had this high here, okay, or, or this one even, now you have this as your lower end, here is your medium, okay, because now you could, uh, you know, kind of com compartmentalize what's going on here. Here's your new range, where you have the middle of this range, and then you have the high end. Now the question is, you know, do we come off this and come back up, maybe make a higher, you know, lower high and then break it and, and play with the 150 day, touch the 200 day, which we haven't had for a while? Or, you know, is this it? Do we hold here and get some kind of buy signal to then take out the mid area um, of this range to go back to highs? So that was kind of like this. Remember the, the mid area or somewhere, somewhere within there. So, trying to just figure out and get some clarity from the charts. And right now the, the charts aren't giving me too much clarity except for we're below the 8 and 21 day. We're hovering around the, you know, the 50 day and it's a choppy mess. And today's five minute was even choppier. Okay, let's, you know, let's go to the chart of the, the spiders for, the, for that five minute. Because all I know is that I was thinking of some kind of sneaky rally, but for me, every time um, you know, I, I added, I got a little hurt. Like this is when I got a little long and uh, bought more here. I think, you know, I got stopped out here. Then I was in the gym uh, thinking that perhaps we break, you know, this wedge to the upside. Now that they got everyone tired, we could rally, bought here, put my stop in, you know, below this, which was, uh, what was it, 205, 06 or somewhere around there. And came went up. I was like, all right, maybe we get that sneaky rally and then failed. And I think that this is where I got stopped out again. And then you know, basically held in there and closed back in this range. So you had to really <laughs> buy into the channel and then sell into the channel and not try and play a breakout to the upside or a breakdown to the downside. So with that said, you know, here we are. <laughs> and, uh, you know, you look at what transpired so far. You had um, this gap from Monday filled, so that just showed you the bulls had no power. But then at this point, we're still holding this new um, defined you know, support. So the question is, do we come up a little bit or, or, or what's next here? So when you look at other sectors, you look at things that can give you clues. The Russell did hold up better. You know, the Russell went into the gap like we were talking about right here. And then this time, remember this right here? This was your last gap. Last gap went below, couldn't find the friend big igniting down move and, you know, and fell apart before finding some support, you know, finding some support, you know, at the, pretty much at the uptrend that we've had since this red dog reversal right here. Remember that? That's when, you know, this support held and, you know, so it goes sideways. This was a nice, um, you know, trend that held. And so here was the level. So it went below 123.70 and didn't fall apart like it did up here and came back above it. So giving you a sort of signal that you can't just be fully, you know, shorting things without a plan. Because if we do hold 2040, so probably be the first thing you could add to for momentum. 
mid caps not exactly as strong but this also came into the gap last time you know it broke a key level it couldn't find a friend this time came back up and you have a little bit of a descending channel here so we'll see what happens next um, what did the bios do the bios um, came back down um, Guys are really doing well with this. You know, you're playing the ranges, and if that's you, congratulations. Here was your sell. Here was your add to it when it broke the eight day. You could have bought the 50 day here and got a nice little day and a half move, or even into Monday. And if you sold here and said, I'm going to sell a, or reshort or retest of this, you had a nice three day move back down. And now here we are holding the, the 50 day again, with more of a lethargic move off of it this time versus last time, but last time you came from a lot higher, so that rubber band was stretched lower. So we'll see what happens here if it builds off of this. But ultimately, still still a little bit in trouble. I, I wouldn't be just blindly buying the bios, but you know, I guess like today, if you thought it was going to break this, you probably are, are maybe short and a little worried. So let's go, let's go to stocks. Um, Twitter was upgraded, looked strong all day, and then did what Twitter has done recently. It gets upgraded, it holds in strong on a weekday, and then just loses steam and dwindles lower and makes it hard for momentum. Um, does this mean that it's game over for Twitter? No, it just means that I guess uh, momentum is hard to find right now in this market and they're not letting things break out. So this little topping tail, if you were long stock, how to get you a little, little bit to reduce it so you're not in tier two, tier three, expecting a breakout t tomorrow. But a, a little concerning considering at the end of the day, we also came off the lows and it really didn't. But all in all, still in this upper area, still holding this nice breakout from here, still above this flaggish type area, above the eight-day moving average, a really nice move to start the year. So you can't be that concerned except for, you know, today it didn't have momentum again. So let's see what it does in the next session or so. I'm still in, you know, the, those options for uh, two weeks from now, 51s. And hopefully it's conducive where you could buy it and it gets momentum and you trade it through 52 and life's great. <laughs> Facebook. Pushed the envelope a little bit. I think some guys made money short here. In the morning, there was a good trade from the short side. I know I was short the spiders early on and gave you a quick swoosh. This too, you know, gave you a, a little bit of a push below the prior low here. Remember that 82.82 was up 30 cents and um, went from what's it called, uh, red or green to red real quick, and that was your pivot. So if you sold 82.21, there was a flush real quick for cash flow down to 80.87 before coming off the lows, and now. If you're, you know, if you're not a momentum player and you're like, oh, you know what, I bought here and I added here and I sold some strength, you know, here's the 21 day, market's down at the 50 day, let me buy a little bit, then perhaps, you know, not a bad idea. But ultimately, getting a little, you know, a little wishy-washy where you don't want to see it go much further than that because some would deem that a breakout failure versus, um, you know, something strong. But from here to here, this isn't the end of the world. Markets aren't that strong and they're not keeping things so pent up. Um, in other areas, Apple, um, you know, still hanging around and hard to trade. I definitely overtraded this one myself today. Um, held the 50-day once again, still in this descending channel. Um, I did not go home long it. I tried it a few times today. It didn't really work. Better off just, I guess, ignoring it until something truly changes. But ultimately, still hanging around support. As long as this hangs around support, I guess the market will if this happens to break below this 122.50, 123 at some point with some potency, that probably would bring also the market lower. And then you have, uh, you know, this and, and then here, you know, earnings aren't for two more weeks, so we'll see what happens. But pretty tight and not a heck of a lot to do besides some three to five minute chart trades, um, but still, still in the range. Google had a hard time holding the 50 day, but this has been, re you know, relatively broken since the double top coming in here. Um, the banks were interesting today. I do not know why Goldman Sachs was so darn strong. Um, you know, that was giving me some clues. I was trying to be long the spiders and some other things because I'm like, look at this reversal here in, in Goldman Sachs. Look at it coming back to the higher end of the range. Why is it doing this? You know, unless the market might be a little stronger than I think. Um, Morgan Stanley, yeah, not much, but still turned up. JP Morgan was cute. Um, supposed to be the strongest bank after the Barron's article and it actually filled the gap here and closed near the lows versus what you just saw with Goldman. But we'll see what happens next. Um, but on, you know, then you also had the TLT strong. So you had the bank strong and the TLT strong. So not really telling you what to do. Um, 
This is your next resistance there. Here is that island bottom in the TLTs and pretty much had a quick move up, pulled in, held the 21 day, and now it looks as if it might want to go again, higher prices, some weaker ADP news and, and some other uh, economic data was weaker. So maybe people are thinking rates aren't a dunk to be raised um, either in June or September even. So maybe that's why this still looks good. Gold found the bid. I talked about 113.50 having to hold and looky looky. That's what happened here. 113.50 held, big wide range bar. Um, now it seems like it's right back in this area. So we'll see what happens here if it goes inside a little bit and then continues. Still some more room, I guess, to the upside. This you know, group has just been so battered and bruised and everyone's like, oh, look at the size and, the, and how big the rally in gold has been. But this is all it is down here. We've seen this type of move before, you know, where it's, you know, it could bounce and if you short it wrong, you're in trouble and it's still just down here. So if you just want to short every single move in the metals, be careful. It's uh, showing a little bit more commitment off of this false breakdown right there. Oil as well, everyone thinks it has to go to 30, but you know, or, or 25. At this point, um, if you look at it, you, know, you, you had this um, false breakdown in oil here where it traded below this okay, level and trapped shorts and stopped people out. And then you had a quick move, came in, talked about uh, 1640 having to hold, and it went as low as uh, 1678, didn't even get there, and today turned up. And now I guess you could say there's somewhat of this um, you know, descending type channel here. So maybe if it breaks above this, um, everyone that was pounding the lows and saying it has to break 30 and get to 25 or whatever it is, or break 40, um, might start a little pain trade to the upside, we'll see. Um, but at this point, still trying to hang in there. And I know the articles this morning I was reading is if, it, oh, if the Iran negotiations come in and they are allowed to out, you know, put an output, it's $5 lower. It's just so funny how whenever the consensus in the articles get one way, it goes the other, and that's what it did for now. But it didn't really help the XLE, um, but still hanging around. Um, this broken group that's been broken for a long time, showing you just how you could have got out of the way when it broke the 21 day or get out of the way when it broke the 200 day and stayed below it. Um, just that's what you do when trends break. And, you know, I don't believe in investing in things below the 200 day if it hangs below it and it's not a trap. But as a momentum trader, Usually you would get out here or here, not even wait for that. But anyway, where are we now? Um, yeah, this mid-level um, mid range, that's definitely wishy-washy. Um, what can you say from the constructive side? Here's your igniting bar, held half of it. Now it's in the top half of this, you know, little bit of a channel here. So perhaps there is some more room to the upside. Um, for some reason it doesn't act well when oil's up. Uh, but when oil is down, it acts well. Uh, you know, <laughs> computers are programmed, and that's what happens. So we'll see if that changes. Um, and, and here we are, first day of the second quarter, pretty much the same as the first, where pretty lethargic trade. Um, the, you know, computers definitely uh, rule the roost as far as sometimes, you know, there are setups where it's a coin flip on which way it goes. And I typically don't like to be in the trade that is in the middle of the day, and you could either be short versus the low of the day or. Um, I'm sorry, long versus the low of the day, a short versus the reflex rally and, you know, and with no clear edge. So when that's the case, and if you don't like that kind of trade either, just sit on cash. Cash is a position and wait. At this point, I still don't know exactly what's happening here with the market. You know, we're, we're holding support similar to what happened here. Okay, and if you remember, this is when the whole consensus and the whole world got very, very bearish. And then we've you know, had a reversal here that failed. Actually, first, you know, you had this, you know, reversal here that failed, that reversed again, that gave you a move back to uh, midterm resistance, and you came back down. You had a reversal here that failed, and then a bigger reversal that, you know, ignited a move to highs. So I don't know how many times this level needs to be tested, but this is a very similar defined level as we had here. So if you want to take your opinions out of the way, you know, you could be, I guess, long versus 204, but once the 204 gives, and if it closes below it, that could give some bears and sellers a little bit of an invitation to press shorts and, and that could then finally get a move lower. And if you look at the weekly chart, you know, we've been, you know, we've been in this weekly chart for a long time. Okay. Huh. And, um, and the trend is your friend and the, until the trend isn't, you know, you have this uh, trend here that coincides. This is your big time macro trend. And then you have a more intermediate trend that we're not even close to 
at, which is 187-ish, which is all the way down here. And then you have a more, um, I guess, uh, you know, um, closer up look where, uh, which we haven't been able to do, which comes in right there. So all in all, we're right here still, and we haven't been able to break what's been going on for four or five years. So although we feel lethargic and, and not a lot of power, um, you can't really anticipate because those can, anticipating have been, you know, taken out to the cleaners. And we haven't had a, we haven't had a 10% correction since 2011. That doesn't mean we have to have one. But if you're saying we're going to correct 20, 30, 40%, like all the doomsday guys out there, <laughs> we have to have a 10% correction first. So let's take it as we come. Right now we know 2040 in S&P. Some high beta names aren't acting the best. We have earnings season com coming up. So I would keep low gross, low net, and don't do too much until we have more clarity. Have a good night.